Welcome everyone to another episode of Get Tech Smart, the show where we were talking about technology, everything that's trending and happening right here in New Hampshire. And today my focus is going to be on when should we start technology, especially for young kids. Technology is blowing up, so it's really important to give them exposure early. So I'm really excited to have Weld Academy here. We've got three fantastic teachers and we're going to talk about tech and kids. So we've got two Dan's and Miss T, right? Yeah. So you all have nicknames. So let's start with the nicknames. Dan number one. Let's yep. Everybody in. calls me Lego Man Dan. So. And but your real name is Dan Hughes. Dan Hughes. So we got Dan Hughes, Dan Kilgore. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have any nicknames? Uh, I think. Mr. Kiggy, Mr. Kiggles, those, <laughs> yes. that's what the kids <laughs> call me. I love how kids come up with fantastic yes. nicknames. Yeah. And then we have Lynn, Miss T, not to be confused with Mr. T. Mm -hmm. Why do you have the nickname Miss T? My last name is Tabiat Nishad. It's a long last name. And it's easy to just say Miss T. Exactly. So this is fantastic because you are dealing with robotics, we have esports, mm -hmm. and we have computer science. Um, so we're just going to dive in and talk about all the great things that are happening in each category at, at uh, Weld Academy. So let's start with esports mm -hmm. because a lot of people might probably be saying, what in the world is that? What is esports and why should parents and young kids start kind of looking into this? Sure. Esports is basically competitive video gaming. You, at, at Weld Academy, we run uh, Rocket League, which is a game where you're playing teams of three and you basically are, are piloting rocket powered cars hitting a big ball trying to get into a goal it's basically car soccer mm -hmm. and this game in particular and i know this off the top of my head because i just watched the world championships of rocket league uh this is becoming a major you know sporting event in not just this country but worldwide uh, this particular season, the 2021-2022 uh, season, was uh, the prize pool was something around $6 million. I'm sorry, can you repeat that one more time? <laughs> $6 million. <laughs> $6 million. Yeah, that was the prize pool for the entire season. And the World Championships, the, pers uh, the, the team that won took home $600,000. Wow. So this is becoming a major competition uh, worldwide. And what these video games, what, what this esports has done is it's given students and people who are not, not necessarily athletically inclined but are incredibly good at video games an outlet for them to be competitive. And this is something that uh, has really just exploded over the past 10 years and was even emphasized through COVID when people were looking for activities for their students to do that were competitive but not you know, kind of interaction, you know, face to face with each other to prevent the spread of uh, of the disease. So, it was something that kind of fell into my lap almost on accident. My daughter, who at the time was eight, uh, she plays soccer throughout the year. So my wife and I discussed, like, okay, well, what can we do to keep her competitive, but yet out of the community because that obviously during right. the winter time when that's when diseases tend to spread. So we're like, oh, hey, well, esports. I just got this email through the school saying, hey, we've got an esports league through Nashua that we can look into. And we looked into it and we ran it by her and we're like, and she's like, yeah, let's try it. So as she's playing this, the, 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 the gears and all the circuits start going off in my head like, ooh, we can bring this to World Academy. And I bet we would have a lot of kids that would be interested mm -hmm. in it. And sure enough, the first meeting of esports, we had 35 kids wow. out of, you know, I don't know how many kids, I think about 200 kids in the middle school. And by the end of the season, we only had 27 because kids, you know, kids would drop out and, and whatnot. You know, they couldn't make the commitment or whatever. Parents, you know, whatever. Second season around, we get, uh, I think we had like eight teams. We kept it in-house for the first year just so I, we could see what talent we had and, you know, could we make this competitive. Right. So second time around, we had eight teams. They played like a round robin against each other. So each team played each other at least once. We did playoffs. And we did have champions of the school, and you know, to be a part of that community, the kids would go around saying, "Oh yeah, we won the the esports, you know, championships and stuff like that." And it was in newsletters that were sent home to parents. And I think this is the route that you're going to start to see over the next 
10 years is esports are going to be much bigger. And we pick Rocket League because of the fact that it's it's available for everyone. I mean, I'll give you an example. My six-year-old son plays Rocket League. He's better than I am at the game. <laughs> that's and incredible. And it is incredible. And he's, you know, that's kind of the target that we look at. He's going into first grade, and I would say he's, and I'm not just saying this because he's my kid, he's probably got a lot more talent than a lot of the first graders in the school because of the fact that he's he was exposed to it he developed he watched big his big exposure. sister play yeah yeah he big. watched his big sister and his dad play and he's like oh hey i i could get in on this too but he really you know spent a lot of time working at his skills to the point where he's like i really would like to play this when i get into yeah. into middle school you, you think of it as akin to a, a, a kid born with like a, like a Ronaldo born with a soccer ball in his feet or a LeBron James with a basketball in their hand. Yeah. You're starting to see more kids born with controllers in Controllers, their hands. the next mm. thing. So instead of, you know, the goodie bag that you get in the delivery room, you, you will just get a, a bag with games exactly. or controllers. Switch or something. Yeah. Exactly. So speaking about controllers, this yeah. is a great way to uh, segue into robotics. Excellent. Uh, because robotics are, is also available at World Academy. Correct. And let me just say this. When you, if you ever visit World Academy, I mean, you walk down the hallway, you actually see banners hanging up of competitions that they have won. And that's what actually triggered me as I was walking out of the building. I'm like, there's a lot of awards here. I need to invite them to talk about robotics. So let's, let's dive in and just really, one, we want to kind of get understanding of what the kids are doing with the robotics because my guests are familiar with BattleBots um, yeah. because they were here. So what are the kids doing with uh, robotics? So the World Academy Robotics Program has a few different facets. The, probably the best or, or most critical component that we have is we integrate robotics into the classroom from grades K through eight. So oh, say that. did you guys hear that from? So from K, kindergarten, all the way through eighth grade. So early on. Yep, we get them started right in kindergarten. And a lot of people will say, kindergartners yeah. doing robotics? Um, mm -hmm. We have different programs where we use Lego robots, where we use a company called Vex. Um, during COVID, we introduced a robot called Sphero, which is an entire robot cased in a ball, mm -hmm. which made it safe. We could bring it into the classroom, clean it pretty easily. Um, but we do that robotics all the way down, starting in kindergarten, getting those kids to understand just simple processes of how things go together. Simple, they're programming in kindergarten. So they're coding. They're coding right in kindergarten wow. with robotics. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that World Academy's done over the last eight to 10 years is really try to integrate as much STEM as they can spidered through all the classes. So. Right. The goal is to keep it something that the kids are doing all the way through eighth grade. So constantly they're being introduced to new concepts, new programming, new robot builds. And it's not just things that roll. Like BattleBots is, is an amazing program. We actually, yesterday in our summer program, um, I watched an episode of BattleBots with the kids to show them just different ways you can build things um, as we were building with the Lego robots. But it's not just rolling robots. This week in our summer program, the kids will actually build a mini golf course um, with motorized controllers that will make a ball go and try to go into a hole. So it's not just things that roll around. Yeah. It's all different facets of, of engineering and design and, and that kind of thing. I think they need a field trip to General Dynamics out in Massachusetts because they're things. creating these mm -hmm. robots yep. that are dancing and, and doing all sorts of things. And the great thing about doing the robotics, even starting in kindergarten too, especially with eSports or with programming, um, is kids are getting introduced to these things, not yeah. only to find out what they love doing, but to find out what they don't like doing either. Exactly, so yeah. they're learning, they have a passion for electronics or mechanical engineering, and they follow it all the way through eighth grade. Um, I was talking with Dr. Diaz, who's the head of the school. She was telling me about um, her son is looking at a school um, for prep, and they were looking at the engineering and robotics program. And the robotics that we're teaching in the STEM and the program that we're teaching at World Academy to those kindergartners through eighth graders yeah. was an intro course at the oh, high wow. school level. At like, a high so they are learning high school level stuff in, in kindergarten. It's the stuff we're prepping them for to go out into the real world and actually be able to use those that, skills. Yeah. That is mm. phenomenal. So we got robotics, esports, and everything comes together nicely with computer <laughs> science, computer right? Computer science, yes. So let's talk computer science. And I can't believe kids are learning computer science because when I think computer science, I'm thinking college. Sure, I mean, in the old days. Yeah. <laughs> but World Academy has made a real commitment to having our students be future ready. And it's only going to become more and more important to be able to be the programmer or talk to a programmer. There's no escaping in the future um, coding <laughs> one way or the yeah. other. Yeah. Um, and and we, so we teach them how to code. Um, uh, also, we t 
Sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> no, don't be nervous. We, we got this. We, you, they, they have to learn how to code, right? Because if you think about the elements that's going on with the gaming and the robotics, yep. it all comes down to the ability to code. And putting it all together. Yeah. Um, the, what they learn in Lego Man Dance courses, how to send instructions to the, the, the motors right. and the servos, and how to in, uh, receive input from the sensors, yeah. and to build if-then-else statements based on that. Okay. Uh, and make decisions about whether to turn left or turn right or right. stay on the line. Uh, that kind of those kind of co uh, concepts are basic computer science concepts that you learn in college courses. And if you learn it in one language, it's portable across all languages. Students start off with Scratch and they learn the basics of animation. Yeah. But by the time they're in fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, uh, we're teaching them in Python, which is in that is <laughs> that I am just blown away uh, because so I love tech. The one thing I don't like is the coding aspect of it. So I have kindergarten kids who are literally whooping me at learning how to code, and I'm over here scared. That is very uh, impressive. It's very and it's exciting. You'll see a fifth grader. Recently, I saw a fifth grader um, learn you know how to use make use of the library, uh, the existing functions that are in the library, and and stack the instructions that way and say. Programming is easy, and if yeah. a fifth grader makes that realization, yeah, I, I need help. I need help. I know. <laughs> five years from now, ten years from now, and even if you look at all the technology and all the apps we have out there in the market that are successful—Google, yeah. Facebook, etc., Microsoft, even—they were all developed by college kids, mm -hmm. and that was you know ten, twenty years ago. Yeah. Now, high school kids are making yeah. apps, uh, you know, like yeah. uh, what is it, Flappy Bird, and other yep. apps yep. like that, yep. game apps. And so forth. So if a fifth grader is making a realization that programming's easy, then it's just going to be another tool that's going to propel them into the future. Same with the eSports e games. These are careers that didn't yeah. exist. Yeah, they, absolutely. And now they don't just exist. They're respectable careers. They are going to get mm -hmm. sponsorships. They don't just make money through gaming. They make money through the sponsorships. And millions of dollars. And millions of dollars. dollars. Yeah. And so there's a whole career path opened up that didn't exist years ago. Same exactly. as when I graduated from college, there was no data science career path. Yeah, <laughs> but now, yeah. if you it's, it's graduate, huge. With a library science degree, you're, yeah. Google is going to find you and, and yeah. hire you on the spot. So and it's, it's all future that. ready. Yeah, future ready. I, mm -hmm. I like that you use that term future ready because right now, if you look at the stats, there's a shortages of data scientists. Mm -hmm. uh, computer science is, is lacking as well in, in tech talent. So Weld Academy is really at the forefront of creating the next Google or Microsoft or Dell employee. Absolutely. This is the commitment I was saying about World Academy to being future ready. It's not that we're just teaching them how to program, we are, yeah. <laughs> but also to recognize that they're digital citizens. And if you're a citizen, you have rights, but you also have responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And you need to be, you need to know that your data, it, you need to know how to protect your data, but you also need to know that you have the right to how your data is being used. You have the right, right. to privacy. And so you have to make choices. Like every time you download an app, you may notice that it's asking you, can I have your contact information right. and your pictures? The cookies, Many consent, people say yeah. yes. And so as, as careful as any one of us might be about protecting our privacy, if we're anyone's contact, you know, our, our, our data is being right. sold. Are you teaching the kids that? The yes. data pri Are you kidding me? You're teaching the, the kids data privacy laws? Data privacy, copyright, um, stranger danger. Oh my goodness. Uh, the idea that, um, you know, there's spoofing and um, the idea that I can pretend to be anybody right. and send and them an email. In. They'll yeah. feel like I'm Justin Bieber sending them an email with free concert tickets, but I'm not. Right. Oh, that is fantastic. <laughs> so you can be scammed for your money, but you can also be scammed, again, for stranger dangers. So. Right. Or, and also we have to understand that you know, when our students leave at Friday, uh, they don't shut off. They're still on their yeah. phones. They're yeah. still chatting to each other. So there's social media that you know parents need to understand as well. And so we have parent nights, and we've oh, invited the National Nashua Police Department to come and talk about staying safe on on the internet. And the parents are always asking, "What can we do?" And it's yeah to to keep our children safe. And number one is don't let the child don't charge your devices in their bedrooms. <laughs> yeah. Charge them in the kitchen yeah. or your room. Don't let right. them go to the, the, you know, keep their devices in their bedrooms. Number two is the old days, my mother knew all my friends. So you have to, your parents should know where all your friends are as well. If you're on right. TikTok, then 
your parents should be on TikTok with you as well. Right. Yeah. Watching. Exactly. <laughs> I see you. Exactly. You'd be shocked yeah. to see how they talk to each other and so forth. So yeah. it's it's a wake up call, but it's uh, it's an important. No, it's really important. I mean, yeah, it's out there. Technology is out there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now becoming easily accessible for a lot of people, especially children. You got the Snapchat, you mentioned TikTok, mm -hmm. Instagram, um, and learning the safety of using technology at such a young age. And, and I, I'm really still in shock right now. They're learning data privacy. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. there are lawyers. Uh, I'm a lawyer and I struggle. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, keeping up with all the data privacy issues that go on. So the fact that you're starting so young is, I, I was blown away before. This is now like beyond yeah. impressive. Yes, yes. The rights and responsibilities of, of being a digital citizen. And I think and that's a big, that from first grade that's on a big, yeah, that's a big part of it. We're going to integrate STEM. And this is something, again, mm -hmm. that we do at World Academy. We're going to integrate STEM into the classroom. We're going to give you a lot of exposure to it. But with that, again, comes that responsibility, like right. Lynn said. You have to understand the technology. Just because you can use it doesn't mean you understand it, doesn't mean right. you understand the safety. And the fact that we open that up to both children and parents, I think one of the biggest things I would stress to parents, uh, or I would stress as part of this technology revolution that we're going through, is that parents have a significant responsibility. Don't give your kid a phone and trust that they're going to do everything right. Right. It's not... Like people say, well, I'm invading their privacy if I look on their phone. Don't look on their phone, but work with them so they understand. Mm -hmm. um, I have two college students, and we went through that. My kids didn't get their first phones until they were they graduated eighth grade. Yeah. And they would always say, well, we need a phone. We need a phone. <laughs> nope, there's a phone at the school. If right. you need, the only people you call are us. So yeah. Right. But we took that responsibility with them. Was so critical. So the one thing I would stress to parents, if you're going to give your children access to that technology be part of that world and that's totally yeah. okay because yeah. you have to keep them safe. It doesn't take much mm -hmm. yeah. to put them at risk. So right. there's a huge parent responsibility to that. No, no, and, and my daughter's probably listening back there. Yeah. Uh, she <laughs> is not allowed to actually have her phone. She's going into 10th grade and she can't bring her phone to school uh, because it's a distraction. Uh, yeah. your, your friends yeah. are not going anywhere. You're, you know, <laughs> they, you will see them after school, <laughs> my philosophy. But let's get back to the robotics sure. um, and just talk about uh, how we, we talked a little bit about how for each, actually, each mm -hmm. area, even esports, yep. there is this kind of, there's competition, but there's yeah. also communication, the, the yep. soft skills, collaborating with your teammates, because you guys are going out there and you're winning yep. this competition. So tell us what, what you do to, one, go to the competitions, how you prepare, yep. and just uh, the whole what is the competition? What are you guys doing? So we have a couple of different programs that we run at World Academy as it relates to robotics competition. We have uh, Robot Soccer League, uh, which is a program that got started last year uh, where we're pitted against other schools. So we do our competitions at World Academy, and then there's a state championship where we meet with kids from other schools. And we mm -hmm. actually, not only do we compete against them, but in any given match, we may part be partnered with somebody from another school because it's 2v2 soccer. Okay, well, what is it? So can you explain to people what that is? Because when so people sure. think soccer, they just think, you know, you're just kicking the ball, yep. you know, and the field, and so that's what, it. So what we do is we actually build a robot that can play soccer. The soccer ball for robotics is about the size of a foosball, small ball. It's on a field that's enclosed, yeah. and it's two robots versus two robots. Now, when wow. we do our in-school competition, it's kids from the same school, 2v2, everybody knows everybody, and they're learning from each other. One of the cool parts of doing it is they're all building robots in the same room. So we have about eight teams mm -hmm. of three. They're all building robots in the same school. They're all competing. They're all learning from each other. They're all sort of stealing ideas, and then it's, you know, yeah. it's not really stealing ideas, but they're learning from each other, and their robots are evolving to find a better way to shoot the ball or lift the ball or kick the ball, whatever, with their robot. And then they use a remote control to drive the robot around and try and to get the ball, the ball into the goal. Yeah. Um, when we go to an external tournament, a state championship, it's 2v2. So it's random draw. One match, I might be, Dan may have a team, and I might be competing with him. In the next match, he may be on the other team, and now I'm competing against him. Yeah. So there's this great collaboration among teams to learn from each other and teach each other because the goal is we want the best teams at the end. Right. And that's usually what happens. World Academy's had a lot of success in Robot Soccer League. It's been a great development program for kids that want to get introduced to robotics. One of the neat things by having programming and esports and all that stuff integrated into the classroom is the fact that we get a lot of girls 
that get involved in mm -hmm. esports, get involved in robotics. Um, it's a tremendous mix. Uh, World Academy is really unique to be very culturally diverse. Yeah. So we get kids from all different cultures, mm -hmm. all different, you know, boys, girls that come and do the robotics because it's we've take we've demystified it. We've taken the fear out of technology. So kids, yeah. when they get into third grade, are already chasing me. When can I do robotics? When can yeah. I do this? They're really excited about it. And then we also have a national competition team. Uh, we have a group, of, a, a small group of kids that have competed on the world level. We just got back from Dallas, Texas um, a few months ago where we competed against teams from all across the world um, in a challenge where we had to throw like a beanbag into a hoop, basically. And we had 60 seconds to throw as many in as we could. With the robot. With the robot, yeah. partnered with another team from somebody we'd never met before. Um, so it's a whole different level. The World Academy team has qualified for the World Championships three years in a row. Wow. Um, and during COVID, we did something called Sphero Global Challenge, and we actually ended up second in the world um, wow. in the Sphero Global Challenge, yeah. um, which was really exciting. So it, again, it gets kids involved. It demystifies mm -hmm. technology. So kids aren't afraid of it. Right. It's not just the iPad. They're not afraid to program. Like you said, and, and we're all from the same generation. Our fear of programming, yeah. mm -hmm. these kids don't have that. And the reality no. is their world is going to be programming. Yeah. Automation is going to be a huge part. Um, and artificial intelligence. That's yeah. the other thing that we're starting to see, the incorporation of AI and automation and, and robots. In your car. Uh, and the car, yes. Uh, and you're throwing around a lot of vocabulary words that you we don't really, these are new to us, but we need to make them normal right. to them to understand that AI is actually an umbrella term for machine learning and other yep. language processing and so forth. So um, it, it's something that we have to keep up with all the time uh, to, to, again, to make the vocabulary normal with them, for them, um, and so that they can keep moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And with eSports, I, I'm, I'm really happy you, you brought up about the diversity. Yes. Because that's one thing that I see that is a huge issue in, in tech, um, especially for, for women, uh, and then for underrepresented tech talent. So the fact that you, you brought up how, you know, we create in, this culture of diversity mm -hmm. and these kids are coming and they feel like they belong and they're, they want to learn, um, I feel like that model should be spread out uh, yeah, across absolutely. tech. And we brought up something similar earlier mm -hmm. about esports mm -hmm. and just this idea of accessibility, whether you're you know, a, a superstar on, right. on the real soccer field or whether you are not, um, you know, you're just, you're just like, like me, just really not that great at sports. <laughs> right. It gives the kids that outlet. It definitely does. And I think that, you know, that to go with what Dan said, it brings a ton of diversity to an already growing field. Yeah. And I think that, you know, in, in, and let's look at it even, even beyond, you know, just this cultural stuff. You know, with my background was in special education. I taught that for 10 years before I came to the world five years ago. And kids that are on the autism spectrum, that is something that, you know, socialization is something that's always very difficult for, for, for people in, with, with that diagnosis. And esports gives them that opportunity to collaborate and it gives them an, an opportunity to uh, express themselves in a way that they could not probably do or may not be able to do on an athletic field. It gives them an athletic, a virtual athletic field for them to compete. Whether it's you know Rocket League, Valorant, or you know even Call of Duty, when you get up into like high school and stuff, so going beyond the just the cultural stuff, you you know, you start looking at children who may have learning disabilities or, or people who may have you know even even you know physical physical disabilities. You can you know that you can, you don't have to kick a ball around. You can just hold something yeah. in your hand. So I think that's something that is, uh, it's a major appeal for esports because it can, it can bring people from all walks of life. I mean, I take my six-year-old, for example. I mean, he's, he gets on the, comp he gets on, and these people that he's playing against probably are like four or five times his age, <laughs> and he's beating them. So it gives them, it, it gives kids of all ages, you know, whether you're six or 66, a chance for them to explore their passion and explore their talent. Yeah. And every one of these uh, future industries that we're training them for, getting you know, educating them for, um, there's a seat at the table for them. If you're good at presenting, 
Yeah. Welcome to the team. If you're a builder, but you don't like programming, yeah. welcome to the team. Programmer, we've got a spot for you. So, and this is real life. When you go to work and you work on a project team, there's different talents at the table, exactly. and everyone is encouraged to be good at what you're good at and let someone else be good at what they're good at. So. Oh, Miss T, I love how you said that. Everybody <laughs> has a sit at the table, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and that is that is fantastic. And and I think what you you all are touching upon is the the, the aspect of technology that is not bad, right? Mm -hmm. The aspect of technology that is helping kids learn in a positive environment. Yep. Yes, there are some risks with technology, mm -hmm. but I, I like the fact that we're, we're painting this picture mm -hmm. of, look how the kids are learning how to take technology and work in teams and collaborate. And, and just that the competition aspect of it, mm -hmm. they, they're learning critical thinking. Yeah. You know, with yeah, the absolutely. robotics, they're learning sure. how can we improve you know, we went to a competition, here's the flaws and the issues we have mm -hmm. when we go back next yeah, year. Exactly. How can we improve and make our robot better? You're mm -hmm. probably right there hitting on the thing that is most important to me when I go into the classroom and teach is failure. Yeah. There's not a lot of avenues for kids to learn how to fail. Safe That's space true. for them to learn how to fail. Even at young ages, soccer, we get those kids out on the field and I can remember coaching U6 soccer and listening to the coaches yell at kids and they're six years old. Yeah. Um, and just thinking to myself, there's got to be a better way to do this. Um, but these kids learn to fail. And a lot of these kids that do Rocket League or mm -hmm. eSports, yep. programming competitions or robotics, not everyone is going to win. Yep. And we're right. very fortunate. We have eight teams at World Academy and two won the championship, which means six lost. And when mm -hmm. we start the season, I'll tell them the same thing. Hey, we've got eight teams. We've got 12 teams. Somebody's coming in first and somebody's coming in 12th. Even if you guys are all right there within... A, a, a hair of each other skill wise. Somebody's still coming in 12th. 11 people are going to fail, and that's okay. What did we learn from that, and how do we move forward? And I think the tech piece gives kids that maybe don't get on the soccer field, don't get on the football field or the basketball field, teaches them that it's okay to fail and to learn how to fail so they can come back and be better at it later. Right. right. And, and you bring up a great point because uh, in, in with the esports club this year, we kept it in house. We The first, first session, in the fall, we had nine teams. The second session, we had eight teams. And there was one team that went 8-0 the entire regular season. They lost only maybe one series in the playoffs, one game in the playoffs out of a five-game series. And they got to the finals, and they got swept, like three games to nothing. And this was a team that had the leading scorer in the league um, on the team. And this was the first time that that person really kind of all season was like, what did we do wrong? And I said, okay, well, the, one of the, the cool things about uh, uh, the Rocket League, the way that it's set up is I set up one game on my PC, one game on my Xbox, and I'm able to look at all of those games. Like my daughter saves the replay when we're, on, when we're on the Xbox, but I also have it on my PC as well. And I go over the games with the kids, like say, mm -hmm. okay, this is where you went wrong. This you is, have the stats. Or not necessarily where you went wrong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is where you could have improved. This is where, you know, this, this guy like. Right. Yeah, exactly. Here's how you can improve. Exactly. Here's yeah. how you can improve. And I think a lot of kids that are in the field, you know, don't get that exposure to, okay, this is where I need to, you know, this is where I need to improve. And there is a certain level of collaboration that goes on with, the, with Rocket League. You're on a team with two other people, not necessarily a soccer field with 11 other people you go to communicate with, but it, it gives them that basic sort of introduction of, okay, this is how we collaborate. Right. I can remember kids coming to me saying, hey, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're communicating, we're having these things, but what, how can we get better? And I said, well, it's all about positioning or, or all those, those sorts of things. So they, it gives them that outlet to come to the teacher and say, hey, we're having these problems. Right. How can you help us? That's in fantastic. Computer science and programming, the uh, failure is built right into the system, the debug yep. and the test phases of development. Um, if you make 10 mistakes, if you find 10 problems, you've learned 10 things. This yep, is to exactly. be celebrated. It's, yeah. not, it's not bad at all. It's encouraged. Yeah. But uh, programming, uh, computer science, and then the robotics and the esports as well at World Academy, I think it brings out their entrepreneurship as Absolutely. well. Yeah. Uh, you know, Absolutely. Th that was unexpected. But last year, there were two fourth graders who made their own signs. They opened their own businesses <laughs> yeah. uh, based on, you know, helping. Do you need help with your programming? Do you want me to do this for you, to build a function for you? Two fourth graders on their own have set up a business for themselves. Right. 
So they're already starting their careers. Yeah, I think you, you, you're bringing up all fantastic points is, mm -hmm. is because we are seeing a rise in tech startups and a lot of these tech mm -hmm. startups are young. <laughs> Either you, it used to be like, college kids starting yeah. them yeah. now. Yeah, They're you. Fourth graders. <laughs> I, I even like. I'm just looking. I just remember this young girl who's created a whole art, uh, digital art, mm. Uh, mm. and has made millions yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in in uh, NFTs. <clears throat> uh, so we are seeing a lot of younger kids who are probably making their parents very happy and uh, <laughs> becoming millionaires. <laughs> I'm gonna need my kids to step it up. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're kind of running out of time. I just mm -hmm. wanted to kind of get a sense off. So we have, we talked about AI, that's, that's up and coming and trending. We also see a push for uh, VR, the virtual reality yeah. yes. as well. So are there any plans to kind of incorporate that at, at World Academy? I brought in, I have three Oculuses, so I brought them in for something we call electives. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, we, the, the kids in the class took turns wearing them. And I thought I would have to take at least a class to walk them through the yeah. science of VR. No, no, I just had to get out of their way. They, yeah, take, they, they put it on, yeah. they knew right away, for the first time using it, they knew right away how to get to the app screen mm -hmm. and how to find and search for a game that they wanted to play. And then they started playing. And I would only slow them down. They're, it's so intuitive yeah. to them, at, you know, based on how early we're bringing them up, what's normal to them. Right. It's, They're it's picking not it up a problem. Quickly. Oh, is this something no one's ever seen before? I'll just. You know, five minutes from now, I'll master it. Yeah. yeah. What as about an, AI? As it, well, I was going to say uh, to add to virtual reality on from an educational standpoint, yep. VR will become huge I as it's integrated into the classroom. Right. Uh, a few years mm -hmm. ago, my son competed in first Lego League, and it was an education challenge. And they designed apps um, that would solve problems in different industries. And one of the industries they had picked was the medical industry. Mm -hmm. How do you practice an operation? There's no way to do it. Doctors learn yeah. literally by operating. What if in a virtual world you could put a patient with a yeah. medical issue and the doctor could practice in a virtual world? That's what you'll see, whether it's robotics mm -hmm. or medicine, or you'll be able to go put a helmet on and act just as you would on a yeah. live patient and perfect skills in a virtual world. How do you deal with a nuclear disaster issue in a plant? Well, you can't practice that. You can't accidentally drop some fuel rods and see right. what happens. <laughs> virtual reality will do that. So the combination of virtual reality mm -hmm. will go more and more into the classroom. Yeah. You're going to see more and more of that. It might be 20 years from now, but oh, you're going to start to see it's coming. Uh, oh, yeah. I think, it's, it's I think coming now. I think even five, 10 years from now, yeah. you're going to start seeing kids, uh, and, and, and Flo and I were talking off camera about it, how, and, which was news to me, that you know certain colleges are using VR sports programs like basketball and soccer to measure students and their skills and whether or not that college is going to take a chance on that basketball yeah. student. Yeah, there's an app that is created by a company located right here in New Hampshire. Really? And they're, they're going to be coming uh, on the show talking to the, the, uh, the founder where they incorporate artificial intelligence and, and sports analytics. Uh, so yeah, so yeah. there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. But what's the final takeaway um, as we wrap up? What what should parents know about technology and, and having their kids start with robotics? I would say from that standpoint, don't worry about the competition component early mm -hmm. on. Everybody runs to a competition. Yeah. Just get your kids, find activities where they can go learn to build and meet other kids. I think, again, the biggest thing for me teaching is I always pair kids up. They're mm -hmm. partnered because soft skills are critical. Yes. Exactly. Get kids in environments where they can get exposed to the technology where they're not afraid of it. Mm -hmm. And then as a parent, don't be afraid to be involved with them. Right. right. Learn, learn. That's how, it's learn and grow. So mm -hmm. learn yeah. and grow with them. Yeah. And with these sports, with, I would also cautious, I would also say for, for parents, you know, everything in moderation, you know, don't let your kids play eight hours of video games because that has been shown to be you know, distracting and possibly detrimental. So, you know, foster their learning, but set limits. Right, uh, that's a good lesson. And I love, uh, we have a summer camp going on right now at World Academy, and there is zero computers involved. The Correct. kids aren't on their switches or on their phones. They're, they're free play. It's mm -hmm. dancing, they're talking to each other, they're chasing each other, they're pig piling on each other. This is what you want to see at their age yeah. all summer long. There's plenty of time to learn to program and, and build your skills right. that way. Uh, but there's there's a need for them to to be social yeah, and absolutely. have fun yeah. in the old ways. <laughs> All in moderation. So mm. they're they're learning the, the tech early. They're learning how to use it to responsibly, and responsibly, and productively. Protect, yeah, and protect themselves as well by learning the 
the data issues and privacy issues that pop up. So mm -hmm. I, I think I think it's fantastic. Starting at kindergarten is, I mean, these are the next Google CEOs and, yeah, and Microsoft really CEOs. Are. And like you said, they were able to put on the VR glasses and, and right away they just ran with it. They were able to just say, oh, we got this figured out. So invite us back next year and see yeah. what we've done this school year. Uh, you exactly. guys are the welcome. <laughs> You're welcome to come back anytime. Yes, yes. And I'll do a disclaimer that I actually have uh, my daughter, my three-year-old, uh, goes to World Academy. Um, so uh, yeah, and I was not paid to endorse World Academy. <laughs> this is not endorsement. This is just this is an option for you uh, if you are looking to integrate your kids uh, into a school that has technology available. World Academy is there. There are other schools, if you're listening and you're watching, and you want to come talk about the tech that you are doing uh, at your school, just reach out and find me. I am all over uh, social media, known as the Nonboring Lawyer, and we also have Get Tech Smart. You can contact Hudson HCTV. So thank you so much you. Uh, for you. being here today. I truly thank appreciate you. it. I, again, I extend an invitation for you guys to come back, and hopefully there's more good things that are going on. And thank you, everyone, for watching another episode of Get Tech Smart, and stay tuned for another episode.